All right, guys, so let's talk a bit about functions in Clojure, okay? So uh, we've spoken briefly about functions. We've even seen a function that was created for us by default, right? And now in this lecture, we're going to expand on those definitions and add a few uh, new notions, right? So let's talk a bit about the function that we have here. Do you know what? Uh, let's actually start by creating a new file. I want to separate um, this uh, the code that we're going to that we're going to write in a new file. So I'm going to right click and create a new. Um, we call it a closure namespace, right? So it is a file, but it each file defines a namespace, and we're going to create basically a new namespace. And I'm going to call this namespace or file. I'm going to call it functions. Right, so we have a, um, an empty file, an empty namespace here. So first thing I'm gonna add, similarly to what we have here, I'm gonna add this uh, parameter here, gen class, okay? Now let's define a function in this namespace. Uh, let's call it main like we did, like we had previously, right? Now we have a main, and as we said, first thing we can add to a function is a optional um, definition, right? An optional, let's say, comment that describes briefly what this function is. Now, I'm not gonna write too much here. Um, I'm gonna say first function. We can actually skip this, but let's add it anyway. Now, we can add parameters. I'm gonna leave it at empty here, okay? empty parameters because I don't actually need any parameters in this function. And then we have basically um, expressions. So what does this function do? And we can actually write as many ex expressions as we want. Okay, so we haven't gotten too much into a lot of functionality. So I'm just going to keep it simple here. I'm going to say print line. And I'm going to say something like my name is John. Okay, that's the that's one expression. Um, let's add another one that says print line, um, whatever loving closure so far. Okay, and then like we said, we can uh, or we have to return a value. So either we return an explicit value, um, which is basically going to be the uh, return value of the last expression that we add here. Okay, so print line returns a null or nil, right? Um, and actually I would like to return a numerical value here. Let's say something like two uh, plus five, okay? Now in closure, like we've seen, we add the verb first and then a list of parameters. This list, we can even separate it with a comma to make it more clear, more explicit, but we can separate it by a space. Um, it doesn't really matter. Now. In order to run this, you will notice that we have two dash main functions, one in the core and one in t.functions here. And in order to make sure that we run the one in our current namespace, okay, we actually have to load the current namespace in the REPL, um, you know, REPL environment here. So in order to do that, there's a keyboard shortcut, but if you want to um, do it manually or just find the keyboard shortcut. You right click, go to REPL, and we have here switch REPL namespace to current file. Okay, and we can see that the namespace has changed here, and we need to actually load the file into REPL. Okay, so I have the keyboard shortcut Command Shift L. It's probably something similar on a PC, but if not, if you don't know what it is, you can find it here load file in REPL, you can find the shortcut here. Okay, so I'm just gonna load the file. And down here, I'm just gonna run main. Okay, so we now have, my name is John, loving closure, and we have the return value seven. Right, so that is a basic function, right? We have as many expressions as we want with a return value. Now, there are occasions where you don't actually want to give a name to a function, right? We want to have, um, let's say, anonymous functions. So there's a, um, a shortcut for that. Either we can have something like 
fn okay uh, function and we don't need to actually give it a name we can just have print line uh, and so on and so forth right but there's even a simpler version of this a shorthand um, um, yeah a shorthand expression to create the function and that is with a hash key okay hash symbol and that simply creates a function for us let's say print line um, hello now this shorthand um, expression for a function can also take parameters right so if we have only one parameter we have a percent sign okay now I cannot load this into REPL because it doesn't have a name but what I can do I just can just copy this and just paste it here and since I have a parameter then I need to um, give it a value let's say John if I run that yeah, I made a small mistake here. Instead of print line, I put print L, print N. Okay, so if we run it like that, then we will get hello John. And I'm just gonna update this version here. Now, of course, we can pass multiple parameters as well. And in that case, we can number the parameters here. Hello John, how are you? And we can pass the second parameter here. We can have as many parameters as we want. Uh, so I'm just going to put something like that. And I'm going to get, hello, John, how are you today? Okay. Um, and that is a anonymous function. Now, anonymous functions are very, very useful um, for one particular reason. And that is that functions are values. Okay. So functions are values in the same way that um, this string John is a value okay or this number that is returned here uh, where is it where is it here that is a value as well so a function is a value as well so what that means is that well you can basically do with a function what you can do with any other value so you can pass it um, to um, a hash table you can store a function in a hash table you can store a function in a database if you would like to do that um, and you can pass a function as a parameter to another function and that is quite common actually so a um, actually a function that is passed as a parameter to another function is basically called a closure and that that is where the function the language gets its name right so let's go ahead and exemplify this in our code let's create a function that let's say increments um, a certain value or a value of a set of values okay and we pass that function to another function that actually gives the parameter uh, the set that we want to increment now this will come will become more clear when we actually um, write the code okay so we're going to give a name to a function with a keyword called def okay now def n is basically a keyword that creates a function def will assign a function to a name right so I'm gonna define increment and this increment is gonna have a function and that's gonna take the function fn that takes a parameter and just simply adds um, one to that parameter okay so i have a function that i have passed to this um, name to this keyword increment okay so now i can use this keyword to call this function as an entry parameter to another function okay so what i can do i can create a function here uh, increment set okay and let's take no parameters so far and i have a inbuilt function that's map this map takes a function and maps it to a set of values okay so i can map increment to values let's say one two three okay so what will this do this will take each value of this set now we will talk um, about sets later on in the course but it's just a collection of values right so this map function will take 
a each value of the set and apply it to the increment function that we defined here and that will add one and in the end it should return us a set with an incremented value okay so let's load the file into REPL okay and let's simply run increment set and there we go we have the return value two three four now if we actually remove this from here okay we just have an X and we get this X as a parameter what we can do now I just loaded the file again and what we can do now we can say increment set and it needs to take a parameter that is a set so I can do one five two seven nine four and if I run that then I will get a set with incremented values okay so this is a very simple example of a closure of a function that I pass as an entry parameter to another function but this is a very very powerful um, mechanism right you can basically create your functions or you can have let's say a function of that creates functions and you pass that function to another function I know it might sound complicated if you haven't worked with that before but it is a very very powerful tool that closure allows us to um, implement very easily uh, during our development so um, yeah that's pretty much all we need for functions we have a very basic understanding of um, functionality in closure even though the functions are quite an essential element we and we will be using them um, throughout our course so that's it for this lecture thank you for following along and i will see you soon